So here it is given that which of the following equation holds true if the point x, y is equidistant from the point given by these two points. Let's try to understand it graphically first. So here let's say we have a point P with the coordinate x, y. And then we have two more points, point A. So point A has the coordinate, the x coordinate is A plus B and the y coordinate is B minus A. And then we have another point B whose x-coordinate is a minus b and the y-coordinate is a plus b. Now, the, we have to show a particular, uh, we have to find out that particular equation which tells us that point a, let's say we are joining point a and point b. So ap distance is exactly equals to pb. That means the distance between point p and point b. If this is given to us, uh, then Using this information, we need to find out which of the equation is going to be true. Okay, for this what we'll do, we'll first try to find out the distance between point A and point P using the distance formula. Similarly, we can also find out the distance between point P and point P. So let us specify the distance formula first. So let us say we have two points, point A and point P, whose coordinates are provided to us. If we join the two points by using a straight line, then the length of the straight line EB that's given by the distance formula. All we have to do is take the square root. Underneath the square root first, we will take the square of the difference of the x coordinate and then add it to the square of the difference of the y coordinate. So let's first try to find out uh, the distance formula by applying the distance formula to find out the distance AP. So AP, so that's going to be equals to, so we'll take the square root so underneath the square root first, what we will assume that let a plus b correspond to x1 and b minus a correspond to y1. Fine. So that means we will get x minus x1 whole squared plus y minus y1 whole squared. Now what's x minus x1? X, we can replace the value of x1 with a plus b. So we have x minus a minus b whole squared. This will be added to y minus y1. So y1 corresponds to b minus a. So we have y minus b plus a whole square. So that's the length ab. Similarly, we can find out the length bp. So bp will be equals to, so we'll take the square root. So here we have the difference of the x coordinates. So that's x minus of a minus b. So we get x minus a plus b. Then we get the square root. Then next we add it to the difference of the square of the y coordinate. That means we have y minus a minus b whole squared. It's given here that the point P is equidistant from a and b. That means AP is equals to BP. So we're going to equate both sides. So AP will be equals to BP, which gives us we have square root of x minus a minus b whole squared plus y minus b plus a whole squared. This will be equals to bp. So bp is simply x minus a plus b whole squared plus y minus a minus b whole squared. Now let's square both sides. On squaring both sides, the square root goes away. So we're now left with x minus a minus b whole squared plus y minus b plus a whole squared equals to x minus a plus b whole squared plus y minus a minus b whole squared. What we'll do, we'll expand x minus a minus b whole squared. We'll expand each of the uh, terms. Oh, so here we'll have to use the fact that whenever we have a plus b plus c, uh, let me note it down, a plus b plus c whole squared, then the expansion will be given by a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus 2ab plus 2bc plus 2ca. Right. So when we use this, then x minus a minus b, so what we can do, we can rewrite x minus a minus b as x plus negative a plus negative b whole squared. Similarly, y minus b plus a, that can be also expressed as y plus, uh, let's say y plus a plus negative b whole squared. Coming to the right hand side, we have x plus negative a plus b. We're going to square it. And then we have y plus negative a plus negative b and then whole squared it. So let's now expand by using this particular identity. We get x squared 
plus a squared plus b squared. Then we have minus 2ax plus 2ab minus 2bx. Then we have y squared plus a squared plus b squared plus 2ay minus 2ab minus 2by and on the right hand side we have x squared plus a squared plus b squared minus 2ax minus 2ab plus 2bx plus y squared plus a squared plus b squared minus 2 times ay plus 2 times ab minus 2 times by so here we can cancel out some of the terms so we can cancel out x squared from both sides we can cancel out y squared from both sides so starting with a squared so we can cancel out a squared with this a squared b squared with this b squared then we can also cancel out a squared plus b squared with a squared plus b squared from the left hand side as well as the right hand side let's see if anything else gets cancelled out so negative 2ax negative 2ax then we have negative 2by and negative 2bi okay so let's see uh, let's write down whatever is left behind so we have 2ab on the left hand side 2ab minus 2bx plus 2ay 2ay minus 2ab this will be equals to so on the right hand side we have negative 2ab plus 2bx minus 2ay plus 2ab so here positive 2ab negative 2ab positive 2ab negative 2ab cancels out so let's combine so 2ay and negative 2ay so this will become 4ay the so negative 2bx will transpose it and combine it with the term on the right hand side so we have 4bx so we get ay equals to bx so this is the final expression so let's go back to our options so we got ay equals to bx so here ay equals to bx so that means option number b so that is the correct option